Hello. I've got to hide for this one. I'm going to talk dirty. This is the seventh and last journal from March 5th, written at 10.32 a.m. The Mayan day was still nine flint, and it's called a shit-filled journal. Oh, well. This is nuts. This is the seventh journal already today. Well, they just keep flowing, so I guess I'm having fun with this. Might as well see what's next. I trust you know by now that I'm no better than you or anyone else, no better than the worst criminal, the worst low-down dog either. None of us is any better than the rest. When we think we are, that's a guarantee that we're in the head, in the mental mind. It's the one that likes to play games like that. There's this other paradoxical thing, too, called projection. Ever heard of it? Projection means that if I have any pet peeves, let's say, that get me angry whenever I encounter them in others, well, that's really just me, myself, irritating me. I'm just projecting my inner problem or issue out there onto others to make it easier to deal with. These things can be a challenge to own right away, so it's just easier to see them in someone else. Projection's not really all that bad. Try it. Check it out. Take anything that irritates you consistently that others may say or do. Then look within. Go deep inside and look again. Consider while you're there the possibility that this pet peeve is really something that bothers you about yourself. It's really an internal flaw, not external at all. Those other people really don't have that. You're projecting it. You're just seeing it that way because that's where you're at right now. It's really not their problem at all. It's yours. All yours. This is pretty cool, really, because it can clear you of a pet peeve really quickly once you see this. Vision is the thing. First, you've got to allow the possibility in that it could really be in yourself and not out there. That's a vision adjustment, okay? Then, once you get over the shock of that and do not give in to the temptation to do any self-bashing, okay? It does no good and it'll just set you back a bit. So. Once you get over the surprise at seeing how you've been blaming some others for something internal, well, you just sit with it a while. Maybe a short while, maybe a little longer. No big thing here. It's all very natural. Remember, be gentle with yourself. Okay, so once you allow this possibility in, you will either see pretty quickly how it's a flaw in yourself that you've just externalized onto others around you, or it may take a bit of time, a little journaling, a few more such blaming events before you begin to see it clearly. Just trust, though, it will come. It's handy to always come from your place of power, your heart space. For your inner t teacher speaks from there. No, I'm not going to say anything about who this inner teacher is because I don't know, and it's probably different for everybody anyway. The thing is, does it really matter? You have a heart space of power, wisdom, and love combined, and you have an inner teacher who guides you there. That's all that matters here. Okay, there is another thing. Your purity counts. 
to the extent that you, your soul or inner being is pure and is able to shine, is allowed by you, by your will to shine, to that extent, you will be guided truly. You will hear and connect with the inner truth. And I hear some of you saying, crap, I knew there was a catch, and there it is. Well, tough shit, my friends. It is what it is. Can you take that? I bet you can. Just sit with it, if you like. See what inner changes it might bring. The thing I really wanted to say with this one, though, is that I do realize that I'm always just talking to myself in these journals. We all project. The more in heart we go, the more we find our say ourselves able to continually abide there, and then the less projecting we find ourselves doing. Nonetheless, I just want you to know that I walk my talk, at least to the extent that I realize that every time I or anyone else speaks, no matter what we are saying and to whom, it is really just a major self-exposure that's going on. We reveal ourselves with every word and with every inner word unspoken. We reveal ourselves with every thought, every feeling, emotion, every movement, every deed. It's just that way. And the further along on the awakening journey, the clearer this keeps becoming. It's very humbling. That's what I've got to say. It's very humbling. But you can make friends with that, too. It pays to befriend the truth. Put the truth to work with you. Take it within. Find it within. Let it guide you. I'm just another yo-yo, another hee-haw out there singing her song, doing her dance. I am surely no better and no worse than you. Ultimately, it is so true that we are all one. Meanwhile, though, while we are still hanging out here in physicality land, it pays to pal up with truth. My deep hope and dream is to lead you deep within yourself, to link up there with your own inner guide and teacher, your very own self. We've got to stop looking to others to provide all the good stuff, all the guidance and wisdom, truth and all that. We will eventually, because life, capital L, has planned it that way. To the extent that you are relying on others or blaming others and not taking responsibility for the self, for your own life, just to that extent will life set you back on your behind, trip you up, and do everything but tickle the shit out of you to wake you up from such nonsense. Oh well, I take that back. I'm just betting somebody, someday, is going to get back to me with the story of how life did manage to tickle the shit out of them. Never put anything, nothing at all, past life. Wow, what a ride it is. Might as well love it, huh? I mean, what are the other options here? 